Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Absolutely. And I wanted to just follow up real quick. I mean, really, uh, Chris, I think the point you made was you, you said, oh, I oversimplified it. But I think you're absolutely right. The, really, the only difference is a volume play, right? So mm -hmm. instead of selling, uh, you know, your widget on Amazon for 20 bucks, you're selling, you know, a thousand of them for five bucks, but you know, you got some margin there. Um, and, and so, you know, there's, there is huge opportunity there from, from the, the B2B standpoint. Um, so I love that. Um, on that note, uh, Chris, how is, how have you seen retailers evolve and respond uh, to the effects of COVID-19? Like what, what, what are, you know, what are the average sellers doing? What are, what, what kind of moves are they making to, to really uh, respond and, and, you know, keep the, keep the doors open, keep the shipments going out? Sure. You know, I think we've seen a, a big shift in a, a lot of different ways. Uh, number one, uh, I think the biggest thing that we've seen is that we saw a lot of local retailers who either had a, a, a token uh, web presence or a token presence in selling online, um, but that the near the twain shall meet, meaning both their retail channels and their uh, digital channels, um, either from an inventory and visibility perspective, or just how they sold and perceived and, and, and treated uh, a lot of times the digital channel as a second child, or their Amazon channel, um, or, other cha or other selling channels as that second or third child, um, really are forced to integrate them because, um, number one, that then becomes their primary sales driver is through those channels now. Um, but also from an inventory perspective, you could get away with segmenting inventory separately, but now you can no longer do that. Uh, so we're now seeing very small SMB retailers having to adopt that, that, that omni-channel experience that you know, we've all heard about as the buzzword for years, uh, but now actually having to put it into practice. So I'd, I'd say omni-channel, uh, even for the SMB, is, is the first trend we've seen. Um, the second trend is around uh, the end consumer um, wanting to buy locally, support uh, you know small business uh, that's in the area. I think we all feel that esprit de corps together. Um, so even on marketplaces, finding the end consumer who who actively looks for a merchant that's close, not just from the idea of potentially a local pickup, which has of course become a thing. Um, but, but, but also the idea of wanting to support that even on marketplace sales. Um, but the last thing and the most, probably one of the most important, um, is the idea of tracking. And before we, 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 we saw probably a lot of common sense things around the idea that, okay, you sell, you got to give a proactive notification, give some shipping tracking information. But that's really accelerated in the age of COVID. And it's no longer good enough to give that very passive token um, initial email and then delivery confirmation. It has to be a much more active and engaging process. Meaning before the checkout, uh, communicating what the inventory and delivery decision making looks like. That's one. Uh, the second is being able to then communicate proactively and then after the fact, if there are delays, things like that, over communicating. So really that merchant slash end consumer relationship has, has become about a hundred or a thousand times more important than the transactional. Uh, and even with marketplaces where oftentimes the seller and, and the buyer may have a transactional relationship, you're starting to see and consumers pay more attention to that buyer and repeat purchases from, from excuse me, from that seller uh, because of their shipping and notification policies uh, of what they've put in place. So I, I think that that's perhaps a permanent change uh, that we've seen. Um, but the last point I'll make on that is to the, the earlier point that Amy had made about 3PLs and fulfillment partners. Um, the permanent change is sellers of all sizes saying, I need inventory closer to the consumer. I need to have inventory pairs closer to the consumer. I have to reduce those days in transit. Two-day delivery, let's say that's now five. It's no longer good enough to say I have a centralized warehouse uh, because I have to now factor in delays. So two days may mean longer, 
but at least if the inventory is there, I can weather that storm a little bit better. So, Chris, I think what I'm understanding is in terms of changes for retailers is that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of focus of customers being able to get things on time. Customers being able to rely on those, um, on those goods. And so, therefore, they're looking for things that are closer. I think there's also an emergence of apps that are delivering and, you know, allowing people to get things from their local stores very quickly. Um, and it used to be Amazon providing two-day prime shipping was awesome, but I think there was some things that happened during COVID that people lost some faith in that. And during that time when Amazon was not delivering, so many providers stepped up and you could get things from your local grocery store very quickly within one day. You know, you could get things um, from other providers like Walmart and other, you know, e-commerce websites on time. They were not delayed in their delivery. And so what you're saying is that consumers kind of responded by saying, look, it's important for us to be able to get things on time and be able to trust where those goods are coming from. Um, in, am I right in, in terms of, of that and do you see consumers kind of staying with that trend post COVID? I think we will. Uh, I think uh, the local pickup, contactless pickup and, and, and a lot of that uh, is probably here to stay. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely I, I think all the things that you mentioned are, are certainly things that we've seen in COVID but that, that, that are permanent changes. And, and to be honest, a lot of them are ones that probably were, were long in the making and it needed that extra push to make happen. Got it. And what else have e-commerce providers had to prioritize in order to fit the needs of the post-COVID consumer? Well, I think uh, one of the biggest things is returns. Um, Pre-COVID, a lot of us may have felt a little discomfort with the idea of printing out a shipping label, finding packaging around the house, doing that. Um, and so you saw the advent of a lot of types of services where you go in person, things like that. I think that'll still continue for sure, but um, I think you're, you're, you're going to see a permanent change of the consumer feeling comfortable with initiating the return from home and printing that shipping label uh, and doing that, uh, even with packaging, things like that. Um, so I, I, I think that's one thing, but on the retailer side or, or merchant side, you're going to start seeing some changes with um, the, the retailer having to expand their window of returns, expand their options uh, for returns, um, and, and, and really make that a lot more flexible because now more than ever, people are a bit more cautious in terms of their purchases. And we all know returns policies do definitely influence the purchase decision, but that's decidedly going to be more so um, in the future. So I, I think returns, uh, is definitely something that we, we, we need to uh, really take a look at um, and uh, really providing those buy online, pick up in store, return in store, return online uh, type of options. Uh, those, are, those are definitely things we're, uh, we're gonna see that uh, I think are going to be permanent. Yeah, we need to be flexible and be able to provide for those needs of the customer. I mean, they're, they're going to be looking to be able to, if they're doing more shopping online, they're also going to want that convenience of, hey, I can return it at my local store. I need to be able to return it online as well. So one of our listeners has kind of a related question here in terms of being able to get more goods and sell on more channels. Um, Lisa wants to know, do you expose your list of providers of goods, so people like us, sellers who have different goods, do you expose us who, um, who are integrated to your systems with our list of products? So for example, Lisa says, if I wanted to drop ship silicone spatulas, could I look at somebody who's working with you and see if they're selling silicone spatulas and find somebody who provides these? You know, uh, that idea there from more of the, the buyer perspective is something that we've evaluated, uh, certainly for the future. Uh, our good friends at Alibaba, for example, you know, great in terms of uh, being a buyer-related uh, marketplace. Um, presently, that's something we, we, we kind of push a bit more on our marketplace partners, um, yeah. but that is something under evaluation for the future. 
Got it. And, and that makes sense. I mean, you're helping us get our products out there to those buyers, whether they be B2B or B2C. Um, so that's, that's kind of it makes sense. You're kind of a connector between channels instead of trying to be all of those channels. So any other big takeaways from COVID or any silver linings? Well, what I'd say as far as uh, some silver linings, uh, number one, you're seeing a lot of brands having to rethink their entire supply chain, how they work with vendors, how they source, um, how discreet or unique they want to make their retail versus their um, digital channels. Um, that's one uh, silver lining. I think the other thing is, is that uh, before we saw probably a lot of fulfillment 3PLs um, really saying they want to work with brands that are, are much higher volume, but now being more apt to work with the small to medium merchant. Um, and I think uh, another silver lining is, of course, uh, being adaptable to the customer need in terms of buy online, pick up in store. Um, I think one of the biggest silver linings is, is something I mentioned before, and that's around tracking. And that's the idea that um, because of this time, the over communication um, ha has become something important to both the retailer and the end consumer. Uh, and hopefully that's a trend that we'll see continue because it really does give the, that buyer the assurance that they need that the product's going to get to them and that um, it's being communicated to them in a timely manner. So hopefully we'll see that as a permanent thing. Yeah, absolutely. And Chris, I wanted to jump back real quick to, you know, you guys were talking about like order locally and, and, and picking up and things like that and, and, and shopping more local. The one thing, this is just an observation, you know, no, no, nothing besides that. But what I've been really surprised with is when all of this was going down and I was going on to Amazon, I'm a big Amazon shopper myself and searching for products that, you know, the stuff that we, the search results were giving me stuff that, you know, was going to take 20 days. What I don't understand is Amazon's got a lot of smart people there. Why aren't they showing me my local retailers that says, Hey, you know, I'm up in Northern California. Hey, this, this guy, this person selling in, um, you know, San Francisco has a similar product that you're looking for. It'll get to you in a day or two, you know, sort of this smart merchant fulfilled, um, you know, uh, way of looking at the data from Amazon's point of view in terms of people searching for products. And I cannot believe uh, this is a golden egg for anybody from Amazon listening um, as, a, as, a, as an Amazon shopper. And not only that, but as a seller, I mean, <clears throat> getting orders locally would be epic, you know, you know, that alleviates this whole you know, idea of the, the, the Amazon um, warehouses being stretched too thin and, you know, products maybe that are in the New Jersey, um, you know, center rather than in California or, by, you know, vice versa is, you know, kind of lifting, you know, or even have a way to filter by saying, hey, show me products that are within 100 miles, you know, kind of like eBay does. Um, in this age of COVID, it's crazy to me that, that Amazon has not rolled anything out um, like that. And uh, anyway, just an observation to, to build on what you were saying there. Um, you know, I, I think that there's still a lot of opportunity in terms of, you know, some of these big marketplaces, you know, getting creative, not only that, but local pickup too, as an Amazon seller, there should be a, Hey, I live, you know, near this, this seller, can I pick this up locally? You know, that that would be awesome. Um, because a lot of Amazon sellers are mom and pops as well. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, just some observations there. Um, in, in, in that, on that same note, um, you know, how is, because of the, the lost trust with Amazon and things like that, and, you know, a little bit, um, you know, is there any, do, do you see any kind of a relation between, uh, shipping's increasing influence on the customer experience and then long-term brand loyalty? So, you know, if you order something and it doesn't get to you for two weeks, you're like, oh, I'm never going to order from, from that company or that person again. Um, you know, have you guys been seeing, uh, anything like that? Getting sure feedback? Have. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say we sure have. Well, the, the first comment I'd say, Andy, is uh, first off, uh, forget about ShipStation putting you on the payroll. Uh, it sounds like Amazon needs to. Um, <laughs> but the uh, uh, jokes aside, um, actually, our, our, our friends at Google um, have, you know, some degree of some of the, the local shopping experiences, um, you know, that you're mentioning there. So um, that is something to check out. And I do think also, uh, the advent of the C to C marketplace, like our friends at Facebook um, and, and and some of the other newer C to C marketplaces, do hopefully satisfy some of that local uh, selling and pickup need. Um, but yeah, absolutely, I think uh, these are all trends that uh, that we certainly need to watch. Yeah, 
excuse me, in terms of, um, you know, uh, getting a, a, an item shipped out and then, you know, realizing that the customer doesn't like what they, you know, what they've gotten, um, you know, wh- how does ShipStation work in, in, in terms of re- reverse logistics returns, things like that, you know, the easier you make it to return something generally, the, the more likely the customer, they, you know, may, they may not have been satisfied that time, but they say, hey, this experience was awesome, you know, uh, I'm going to come back to this, you know, this supplier or this, this uh, seller because they did such a great do- job, this brand, um, you know, any, anything you can, uh, you know, fill us in on that? Yeah. Um, well, what I can say on returns uh, on our side is uh, one of the, 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 the big wins that we have is our branded returns portal. And what that allows a merchant to do is to create uh, a branded experience with their own brand uh, that uh, they can send their end consumer uh, to initiate the return themselves. Uh, as we know, uh, there's a lot involved in a return, the inbound call, the request, the RMA, uh, the shipping label, uh, the inbound receiving process, uh, and all of that's cumbersome, certainly for the, uh, the retailer, if not uh, certainly the end consumer as well. But our branded returns portal allows you uh, to be able to create that branded professional experience uh, to send as a self-service type of model uh, the end consumer uh, to, to, to be able to uh, initiate then uh, on their own. Yeah, I like that because, you know, you can really uh, decrease uh, the customer service uh, time and energy, you know, what if, if you want to have the, the, the most, you know, frictionless return policy ever, as you just say on the on your packing slip, like, hey, if you don't like this, go to this web address, you can initiate your own return. Um, you know, you might want to make, not make it that easy, but you can, you know, <laughs> you can make it that easy where you don't even have to talk to the customer if you don't want to, if you've got a liberal return policy, they can just set it up and send it back to you. And then when you get it, you know, when you get it back, you just, you know, check it back in, you're good to go. Um, so that, that's a, a great point in terms of, uh, you know, getting those great returns. Um, with, with the COVID going on uh, and, and all that uh, stuff, uh, Krista, are you, um, are you doing anything different in your daily routine to, um, you know, keep yourself more productive? I know I've been working at home for a long time. I have three small children and uh, you mentioned that you have some kids too. Um, I, I know I have, I've found it extremely hard to focus, get things done, you know, cause not only am I working now, but I'm also watching children and, and uh, doing a bunch of other things. A- anything that you've learned uh, over these uh, past few months uh, that you can share in terms of, you know, getting stuff done from home. Sure. Uh, well, I've been working from home for about three and a half years. So uh, the change for me was more uh, having my child at home, having my wife at home. <laughs> so uh, certainly I think that experience um, w- took, took some getting used to, but I think uh, for all of us uh, as advice, spending time with our families um, and then finding ways to break up the uh, routine, whether it's going for a walk around the neighborhood or cooking or whatever that may be, uh, really does help to to break that monopoly or monotony, not monopoly. Um, I'm thinking of of playing games with uh, my 12 year old. Um, but uh, I think uh, more than anything to realize that things like Zoom fatigue uh, are really a thing, and uh, to be wise and uh, cognizant of it uh, to try to um, to manage that in your daily life. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of, you know, are you, uh, are you one of those people who likes to, to uh, always learn, you know, are you, are you reading or, you know, self-improvement, any books, podcasts, uh, you know, I'm a big Audible fan, anything that you're kind of into right now that you can share in terms of, uh, you know, what, what, you're, what, what, what you're into right now uh, on the learning side of things? Sure. Um, well, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Malcolm Gladwell's books. I've read all of them. Um, I, uh, right now, um, I'm, uh, uh, finishing up. I've been a few years behind on reading, thinking fast and slow, but that's, uh, that's what I'm reading right now. Um, and then I like to get uh, a lot more depth on, uh, current events and politics. So, uh, I have, uh, several, uh, on my docket right now, uh, regarding, uh, you know, politics and, uh, uh, current events, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm reading. So awesome. Cool. Um, so um, anything else that, that, that you want to share with our listeners in terms of, uh, you know, any, any trends, anything else you want to share um, kind of as a, as a, a last, uh, you know, last effort to kind of let people know um, how to get started with uh, not only e-commerce, but ShipStation and, uh, and, you know, what you see 
Uh, actually, what you see, you know, in terms of people coming on board, you know, how people are having success maybe would be a great uh, thing to share. Sure, sure. I think, um, you know, to your uh, earlier points about adding selling channels, um, that's something that's really important. Um, I, I find it uh, interesting a lot of times when I find merchants who actually have a second or third selling channel uh, and they use ShipStation and then don't actually add that on. And, and a lot of times we, uh, we have to wonder why that is. And, and a lot of times that's just uh, simply sometimes a, a setup uh, issue and uh, our inbound call resources um, and support uh, can help you do that. So that's, that's something, uh, again, I was, I was actually quite, quite surprised to, to find that that's, that that's something that occurs. Um, the other thing is, is I'll say that uh, uh, a lot of new entrepreneurs are getting online and um, we have a coupon code if you go to shipstation.com of let us help 90 and that it will give you uh, 90 free days uh, if you go to shipstation.com and use that code when checking out. Um, so those would be the things I'd say uh, as resources and I mentioned before our brand returns portal um, and resources like that. Um, in addition to ShipStation.com, a lot of either the case studies or blog posts, um, yours truly contributes quite a few, uh, particularly on international selling. Um, but uh, a lot of those blog posts really uh, can help you quite a bit in your day to day. Uh, and, and a lot of the, the case studies uh, are great because you can take a look at what somebody else did and say, hey, uh, that could be me as well. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the biggest thing for us, like I said, uh, circling back around for ShipStation was just the, the time savings and the automation, right? If you're getting orders from all these different marketplaces before it was so hard to keep track of, you know, printing labels, things like that, the, the whole ability to batch um, and collaborate batches. So, you know, we can, um, you know, we can, we can spool up batches and, and you can, you know, tag them or uh, put in a little note like, hey, you know, these are this product's batches things like that, um, you know, ship these tomorrow or whatever, you know, all that organization in terms of, of order management, I think for us has been uh, the biggest impact that ShipStation has made. And uh, on the last note, uh, Chris, how can people get a hold of you in terms of, you know, website, email, uh, LinkedIn, anything like that that you want to share? Sure. You know, I mentioned the uh, Let Us Help 90 as our coupon code. Uh, my email address is in the chat or certainly if you want to make it available. Krishna, my full name. Uh, I go by Krish, and like I said, the other famous Krish Iyer is the CEO of Walmart in India, but uh, krishna.iyer at shipstation.com. Um, and certainly if you find me on LinkedIn, uh, always happy to help. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. And everybody uh, listening to the podcast, if you, if you haven't done so yet, please rate, review, subscribe. We really, really appreciate when you guys do that. Uh, we love getting those uh, the feedback on the reviews. Um, if you know somebody who's getting into Amazon or e-commerce, make sure you share this podcast with them. We give you guys stuff that, you know, people are charging thousands of dollars in terms of courses and things like that. We're here to help you guys. If you haven't joined us live yet, I 100% ask you to because it's a completely different experience. You can ask me questions, Amy questions, our guest questions like Chris, who has so much experience um, in e-commerce. We don't hold back. We help you guys any way you can. That's sellaroundtable.com forward slash live. Sellaroundtable.com if you guys want to find the old episodes, videos, you know, all the resources that we have for you guys. Go check that out. And we'll see you next time, Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific, if you want to join us live on Sell Around Table. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellaroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.